Hello everyone, my name is Mustaine Jersey and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build three different examples to control the fluid gantries here in Stormworks. What a lot of people don't know about the fluid gantries is they can actually be remote control. Now, you will notice that on every fluid gantry in the world of Stormworks, whether they're here at the refinery or at one of the oil rigs or even out at one of the locations, is they all have little radio antennas on top of them. For example, you can see the jet fuel has a little radio antenna. The diesel one has exactly the same just over here. And we also have the crude oil one, which also has one. Now, it can be very advantageous to you to be able to control them remotely. Maybe you're in your ship. You don't want to go up and walk to it. Maybe you're driving by. It's all the way at the top on the oil rig. You don't want to climb the steps. There can be a lot of different reasons that you don't want to get out and manually control them. So being able to control them remotely is quite useful. And we of course have all the components to do that. Now, as I said, we're going to build three different examples, something very basic and very easy. I'm gonna show you what frequencies you can run them on and also what controls you need to give them to actually go and move them left and right and also bring the hose up and down. So let's go ahead over to the workbench and let's build some examples. So we're here at the creative island and I'm just in the workbench and we're going to create three different examples. Now I'm going to build a small little base that we're going to have our examples on. And from there, we're going to actually build them. Now the first one is going to be a very, very basic and very simple example. Obviously not the best to do it with, probably takes a little bit too much space, but at the same time, will give you a very clean and very simple way of doing it. Now, how I like to control it a very easy way is to use a seat. So I'm going to get one of the seats. Now you can use any one of the ones you want, whether it's a pilot seat, a driver's seat, or a regular pilot seat, or even the hot sauce. You can use any one of these four seats to go and control the gantries. So we're going to use a pilot seat. Now this is great. Most creations already have a pilot seat or a driving seat on them. So repurposing this to control fluid gantries is a really cool and useful way of doing it. The next thing you're going to need is obviously a way to communicate over to the gantry. And for that, we're going to be using a radio. You can use any one of the radios you want, whether it's a huge, a large, a medium, or a small. Obviously, depending on which one you choose, it will have a longer or shorter range to it. We're gonna stick with a small one for our example. Now that we have a radio down, we also need some way of powering it. So we're going to go and get a battery. Simply gonna go and put a battery on our creation. The next thing we're going to need is some way to choose the frequency. Each one of the fluid gantries work on their own frequency. So in order to actually control it, we're going to need some way of entering a number in. I like to use a keypad. So I'm going to go and put a simple keypad down on our creation. Now, lastly, you'll need some way to turn this whole remote control unit on or off. We're going to be using a simple key switch. You could use a button, a key switch, you could even use the occupied seat to turn the radio on and off. It's once again up to you. As I said, I'm going to be using a key button for my example. Once we have that done, we can even go and label our little switches. So for example, the keypad is going to be our frequency. The key switch is going to be to turn the system on or off. And now comes the fun part of doing the logic. Let's start with the electricity. We want to connect the battery over to our radio. We also want to connect it over to our keypad and we want to connect it over to our actual key switch. The next thing we're going to do is connect the composite from our seat over to the radio itself. That way, whatever controls we put into the seat on our keyboard or mouse are going to get sent through the radio to the fluid gantry. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to data. This is where we want to go and do our keypad over to our frequency. Remember our keypad is what's telling the radio what frequency to run at. We also need some way to go and tell the radio to turn on and broadcast data. That's what we're going to be using the keypad for. We're going to be connecting the toggle button over to the radio to turn it on and off. Once we have that done, that's all we need for our first example. Very simple, very basic example. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a very similar design. The only difference is we're not going to use a seat. This time we're going to use some push buttons. So we're going to go and get some push buttons. 
and we're going to add them onto our example. We're going to have two, one for up, one for down, and one for left and one for right. Once we have that down, we can of course go and label them accordingly. So we can do hose up, we can do hose down, we will need to do crane left and crane right. Once we have those buttons, we will need very similar things that we have on the left. We will also need a radio, of course. That's how we're going to transmit our data. We're also going to need a frequency. So we're going to need a keypad to tell the system operate on a certain frequency. And I would like to also have something to turn it on or turn it off. So we can go and label those. So this is going to be on off. And this is going to be our frequency. Because we're here in advanced mode, we will also need a battery. So I'm going to add a battery on. Now we need some way to take these on and offs and send them through composite. This is where we're coming to a little bit more advanced and we're going to be building a microcontroller for this example. So I'm going to go to microcontroller editor and I'm going to call this my fluid gantry controller. You will need four inputs. One, two, three, four. This will be for your left, right, up, and down. You will also need your composite out, and that will go to your radio. Once you have the five nodes, you can increase the size, and you can also spread out the nodes on the actual controller. So you can see we have up, we also have down, we have right, left, and we have the radio. We can then now go into the logic and split this out. So down, up, right, left. We now need to convert or on off signals into composite to send it through the radio. To do that, we're going to go down to our logic and we're going to go and find our right on off. Grab one of those, go and stick it on, change the channel count to four because we have four of those nodes that we need to send through. And we can simply go and connect everything over. Left is going to be two, right is going to be one, down is going to be four, and up is going to be three. You can now connect the composite over to the radio. You can go and, of course, save this. And that way we can close it off, go back into our inventory, find the controller and add it onto our build. Once we have that on, we can now connect the logic. Start with electricity, connecting it over to each one of the components that need electricity. Move on to the composite from our controller over to the radio and then from all the buttons into the controller. And then we can also connect our keypad and our on and off. So we're going to start by doing the on off over to the radio, our frequency over to the radio, our left to our left, our down to our down, right to right, and up to up. Once we have that, that is our next example done. So now that we have our two examples, we can come on to the third one, which I actually think is probably one of the best ways to do this. Now, instead of having these large setups, it would be much nicer to just go and have a small little remote controller that you can pick up in your hand and that you control the gantry with. Now we know, and we'll see in a few minutes that the fluid gantries work on a four digit frequency, like one, two, zero, two. Now the problem with the remote controllers in game is they only work on a zero to eight frequency. So that's not going to work for our example. So what we need to do is we need to read the data that we play or use on this little remote controller and send it out on a custom frequency. To do that, we're going to need a few little components. We're going to need two radios, one, two, 
we're going to need two keypads one and two and we're also going to need a key switch to turn the whole system on or off that's all you'll need of course electricity so we'll grab a battery so much cleaner design in comparison to the first two examples so how do we set this up for logic we're going to start with the electricity and get all of it connected to electricity to start with the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually name these i'm going to name this my on off like we usually do this is going to be for our controller frequency this will be for our gantry frequency and now we can move on to the composite we're going to go and read the data from our remote control unit and send it back out over to the gantry radio we can move into the data and we can simply go and connect everything up we're going to take our on off to our second radio which is going to the gantry we're going to connect our frequency this is the frequency for the controller over to the first radio and we're going to send the frequency for our gantry over to the second radio just like that, we can now go and pick up the radio controller, tell it to work on frequency 5, set this radio to frequency 5, set the second radio to frequency 1202, for example, and we can easily go and control the cranes. So now that we have our three examples, let's go and spawn this over at the refinery and see how they all work. So I've just gone and spawned our little three examples here, and we're going to test each one of these to see if they work. Now, you do need to make sure that you go over to these gantries and make sure that they are in remote control mode. That's one thing that you do need to make sure that you have on. Now, earlier on, I was speaking to you about the frequency. Each one of these do have a set frequency to them. For example, this is Jet, works on 1863. Diesel works on 1202. And then we also have crude oil, which works on 1267. Now you're probably thinking, how are we going to remember those numbers? Well, it's actually quite easy. If you have a look at the front of the fluid gantry, you will notice it has a number, 1267. That is to the frequency. Go over to the diesel, 1202. That is for the frequency. And over to the actual jet, which is 1863, which is the frequency. Now, if you find these actual fluid gantries on different locations, they all use the same frequency. So once you know these three, you'll be fine and good to go. Let's go and have a look at our three examples. So the first example, which is just a seat to a radio and a frequency, let's go and try and control the oil. So we're gonna get into the seat. I know the frequency we need to do is one, two, six, seven. We're gonna go and enter that in. One, two, six, seven. And we're going to go and turn it on. Anything we do on our seat now is going to go into that actual gantry. So one is to move right. It's a toggle button. So if I pressed one, it's going to continuously go until I press one again, press two to go left. It's going to continuously go left until I press two again. Four to lower the actual hose. Four to stop lowering the hose three to raise the hose and three to stop raising the hose it's a very simple design turn it off when we're done so you've just gone and repurposed the seat to remote control a crane let's work at our next example which was push buttons to move this left and right so the frequency we're running at is one two zero two one two zero two and we can turn the system on you can now see that if we press the left, it moves left. If I let go, it stops. Can go right, let go, it stops moving. Down, brings it down. You can see there, if I let go, it stops. Up, brings it up. And if I let go, it stops bringing it up. So another very clean and easy way to do it. The last way, which I think is the best, is to grab a remote controller. 
We're going to set the remote controller to work on channel 5, pressing B to change it. We're then going to tell our system to read the controller on 5, and we need to go and send it back to 1863. Cool. Let's go and turn the system on. And in theory, if we enable the remote control unit by clicking left mouse, we should be able to press 1, 2, 3, and 4 to move the arm. 1, and it's moving to the right. Let go of 1, 2, moves to the left, press 2 again, stop, 4 to drop it down, press 4 again, stop it, 3 to raise it up, 3 to stop it. So there we go. There is three different examples of how you can remotely control the gantries here in Stormworks. You can repurpose a seat with a radio. You could build a completely new panel to do it. Or you can use a simple small remote control unit to control it. Personally, I like the last option, but you guys can build any of these three examples if you want to remote control your fluid gantries here in Stormworks. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Hopefully it has been somewhat helpful and informative as always. If you have liked it, definitely go and hit that little like button and also smash that subscribe button. And until next one, we will see you then.